Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take 2. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Psalms 79.9. Help us, O God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us of our sins for your name's sake. Alright, so this week I have not done any crochet. I have been playing a lot with the serger every minute that I am not at work. I am in here sewing, surging, trying to come up with things that suit me. And by that, I mean, okay, so you guys know that I made the two um, little vinyl ones. I think vinyl is going to work for teens, youth, I just don't like the look of it as an adult. So, yeah. Um, this one, of course, I think I had finished last week. I don't know. I may have just had it pinned. But I made that one. I just don't like it with that vinyl. The vinyl is very stiff. And, yeah. And then this one, I just have the handle to put on. And I don't like the size. Those circles were huge. And it's half the circle. And, yeah. Just don't like the size of this one. It, it's almost too small. Again, teen or youth maybe. I still have the handles to put on, but um, anyway, not my favorite. Tried doing ah, something a little bit. I don't know why I'm on the round thing right now, but I did this one and it's actually a decent size. Um, I like it. It's I gotta put a cam snap on top, but yep, yeah, it's okay. Not one of my favorites, but hey. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped everything out of my lap. Okay, um, I then went to work on maybe making some little like wallets. So this is the first one I have to rip out and redo because my zipper slipped. Um, this <laughs> is supposed to line up here and it slipped down in when I was this end right here. When I was selling it. So this one. And it's just one pocket, two pocket, and the zipper part. So I'll be ripping this one out and redoing. Um, this was to figure out sizes, and if you look, it's a little bit thin, but if I add some stiffness to it, you can get something like this. So I've got the interfacing in here. When I'm playing with sizes, I don't really do the interfacing. You see, this is another one that I made this little one, but no interfacing, just because I can I don't know. I just don't waste the interfacing if I am just playing with size and don't know if it's going to work. So this one has interfacing. It has pockets for cards here. Oops. And here. And there's actually, you can put four cards in it. This is all the way open. And there's two pockets here for all the way open. And how I got this measurement is a dollar fits across this. So, um, or a dollar bill, an American dollar bill. So, yeah. I kind of like this one. And I think I'm going to actually make some more of these. So I got the measurements off of this. It is going to have a cam snap right here. Uh, then you saw this when I played with it, played with the sizes and literally just measured, um, cards or whatever came out a little small. It would work for a little kid, for a little girl. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have any interfacing in it, but it's got three pockets, you know, and so it would actually work for a kid. <laughs> Man, I'm all thumbs today. Okay, then I made a little gift card holder. It needs a cam snap too. And then I made this one that needs a cam snap. And 
it is a little bit bigger and whatever I just did with my gift card here uh, there it is so you can put gift cards in there money um, so uh, I thought about selling this and this is a set you know little mini wallet and that and this guy and just selling it as a set but we'll see I don't know I really like that yellow material it's really cute that butterflies and then I paired it with a blue so anyway I played with sizes and like I said these sizes some of them came out well some of them didn't some of them I just misjudged because if you look I did measure the card and did it, but I misjudged by about a quarter of an inch. <laughs> so the cards don't fit in there. So basically I forgot to add seam allowance to this one. And if you look, <laughs> it just, it just barely does not fit. So yeah, but that's okay. It can be for a child or, you know, have a, matching wallet I don't know but I have been playing with the sizes I know that five inch width makes these right here um so these are five inches across uh, if I want it any longer you know I go from there but nothing less than five inches for this size And I'm okay with that. So five inches. Um, different lengths do different ones. I was playing with how to do two pocket, three pocket. Um, what length I would need for um, this right here. So this is two and a half. That's three, and that's three and a half. And it's just doubled over. So if I want to do either of these you know I just add the appropriate amount so um, I worked on that and then I started working on one and I have a little bit to do on it I know it's inside out line bag so it's going to have I'm gonna undo this clip here it's going to have an inner pocket an outer pocket and a half pocket I'll just take um I already have my hardware in place there's a little clip and the clip can go either side inside or outside depending on what the person wants then I've got two little d-rings and I am going to put I'm going to use rope for this one because it's navy um so and this is the back, so it only has the D-ring, one on each side. But in the center, as a divider, I haven't woven my tails or anything. I have, and this is literally a half pocket. So this is for your cell phone so that it doesn't get lost. I cannot stand them to dig. And I don't use a very big purse. My cell phone always drops all the way to the bottom. So... I did a little half pocket so you don't have to dig and this is your cell phone pocket um, and this will be the center divider for the other one I need to so I made this out of some scraps and just kind of big I need to um, trim it down I need to put this for size up here of course and that's what I had started to do trim it down and then bind it off and the bag will be done so and I have to sew of course top stitch but it will all be bound off in that. So I did that one. Then I did have one other thing. I went to Dollar Tree. Can't even remember what for. And I was, I don't know if you can see, I, I'm very messy sewer. Very messy. So we're going to do this. Um, you can see all those stacks of fabric. And I was sorting um, and do it, you know. So I'm literally going to go through and see if something is not five inches wide, I'm going to get rid of it. 
um, unless it's for the little cards. But I did sort all that. And I did have the ironing board across here. And it was too much. Just too much. Oops. Um, and so the room was kind of packed. I've got my sewing machine here, my serger here, stack of stuff that I have to, I've got to donate that box and then I've got some other things. And I did work on the coasters and stuff. I'm not going to take them all out, but I squared all of them coasters and then the little bowls. I just have to mark and do the corners on the bowls and top stitch all the coasters because I played with the serger and just, yeah, it, they were done. So while I was at the dollar store, I found this and I'm like, holy cow, I need this. Now, why do I need this? Because now I'm working on smaller pieces like these and I can zip, zip, zip along and use this board instead of my one that takes up the entire table. So yes, I still have it on there, but my problem with the big board is I'll lay down to cut a piece of fabric and because it doesn't fit the table, you either have to turn it one way or the other. So the long way you've got half the table is a mat, but it sticks out and it moves. And, and if I turn it the other way, then sometimes I miss the mat on the edge. So yeah, there's that. So I grabbed this little guy and I really like that it has the angles. Mm, I'm doing it the wrong way. This way. Um, I hate the camera being backwards. Makes me feel weird. So it's got a 60, 45, and a 30 degree angle. 45 would make your corners. So anyway, I really liked it. It was, I don't know, what was it? Just a buck. Mm, a buck. So yeah. And it is a cutting mat. It is a good solid mat. So I'm okay with that. The other thing that I did, and this is my granny's trick. So granny used to um, use her kitchen table to iron on and she'd roll out a piece of foil whenever she was doing like big projects, not hard clothes. And then she'd put a towel down and then she'd iron on it. And I thought it was so cool that the table never really got hot. My granny says, the key is extra thick aluminum foil. She got the heavy duty. Okay. So when she was laying out her fabric, she would lay it out on the table, you know, iron. And she just had one strip of aluminum foil across there. She'd iron it, she'd pull it up. She'd iron it and she'd pull it up. So I took a playbook from granny's book. I made me a little ironing board. So I did look at buying these. Okay. They were anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't want to pay that much just for a tabletop. Which I realize is not much, but hey, when you can do it this way. So I was in the dollar store, found that little thing, and I found this little piece of wood. A solid piece of wood, probably quarter to a half inch thick. Um, it had little things where you, the two little things where you hang it on the wall. So I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be like some kind of placard, but they weren't put in with nails. They were put in with screws. So I took them off and I now have the hardware in case I need to, to hang a picture, but um, I took them off. And I actually covered the bottom of it because this has like a beveled edge. And so I covered the bottom of it and it sits really cute on the table. So anyway, I took a heavy duty piece of aluminum foil, just laid it down, put a piece of uh, batting over it that I had that was just scraps. And then I covered it with this cute flannel. This, so I'm going to tell you right now. Don't ask me where to get this flannel. I made my daughter Christmas pajamas with this. She's 34. Over 30 years ago. 
So don't ask me where to get this fabric. <laughs> it is super cute. Um, I love this fabric, but now I have a permanent ironing board out of it because, yeah, I didn't have enough to really do anything. She was like two or three when I made these, and she had a nice um, set of pajamas. Yeah. Anyway, that's where the material came from, was just from my tote, and it was just a square. I mean, you can see it was a decent sized square. It had, it was a little wider, um, but pretty much, you saw the back, I rolled it, and then I stapled it, staple gunned it on there, just, that's it, and that thing is amazing. I love it. My iron can actually sit on it to the side, and then I just do my piece interfacing and it even works a little bit for the bigger stuff because I did that big navy bag that we did after the interfacing on it. So yeah. But I made that. And if you want to know cost, so the aluminum foil I had in my cabinet from grilling out, it was a heavy duty kind. Um the material you heard came 30 years ago. It was a scrap from the scrap bin. And this little board was three dollars and then I had the two clamps that were you know for hanging it. I still have those in case I want to use them. So um yeah three dollars and I have me a little ironing board. I like the curve. The other thing that I like about this <clears throat> is this straight edge right here. When you're creasing those seams um I could actually put this up against the edge of the table, pull down on it a little bit and then pull my seams taut for ironing. And it works amazingly. I love this. So, but yeah, 20 year old material, super soft, great fleece, amazing pattern. I like it. And the orange, I know it's popping on camera, like it's 3D or something. It really doesn't look that 3D, but yeah, there's more of the effect. But yeah, my daughter loved it. She was like, Flowers. Woohoo. So anyway, um, I am going through fabric and sorting through and figuring out what's going to be bags and what's not. I also have a really cute idea for um, a drawstring type bag. It's more of a flower type bag. It's a, it's a smaller bag. Let's just put it that way. And I'm going to do some of those. Whoops. Uh, so I have all these ideas going around and I've got to get them out on paper. I've got to get measurements for them. It's taken me a little bit of time to um, figure out sizes and what I exactly I want to do, what kind of pockets I want to put in. Uh, do I want to put zippers pockets in them? Um, I think if I do something like this again, I think the zipper will be on the outside. Um, just saying. I don't. It slips when you're sewing. And because of the way you're sewing it, it's actually on the inside. And so I don't like that. But see here, this is slipped and this is too tight. So I probably will rip this one out and redo it before I do anything. And I probably, since I have to rip out anyway, if I decide I'm going to keep it, I'm going to use um, some interfacing on it. It's it's just too thin. So two pieces of cotton is just too thin for a wallet. But all right, I'm going to get off of here. I know that, again, there's not a whole lot of crocheting, but please, you know, and I, oh, and I put in another order for that sewing place. Um, me that white and it's supposed to be coming I got a stand right now I have a tote for all the threads but I got a little square thing that has stands on it and uh, then I also got an all uh, there was a couple of things a uh, bobbin box I got six I got no, I'm sorry, two six-pack of needles, and then I got two six-pack of denim needles, which are a little bit sharper, and going through this thicker stuff, that will be better. Um, 
I did get some basting tape. I got some folded bias tape, white and black. The white I actually need for this bag. I'm going to use it. Um, then I've got the thread tray. Oh, and I found these really cute snips that, you know, weren't very expensive and they're metal and they probably work better than the cheap plastic snips I have. So yeah. And then I got an awl, you know, for these thick things, I need to be able to push it straight and flat through. So yeah, I did that. So it should be kind of, it just now shipped like yesterday evening. So, but yeah, I'm going to make a list of, um, bags or wallets that I'm going to sell. And then I'm going to stick to that. I'm not doing a hundred different styles. I'm going to do one style and I'm going to do it. Well, does that make sense? Uh, I probably will do this style right here and have it with the only variation might be that there might be a zipper across here. Um, just because, uh, that it would make it a zipper one and that way you could kind of zip, but you know, it is what it is, but I am going to make just a list of the basics that I'm going to do and the bags that I want to do. I really think that I'm going to do some more like this style that I did this Navy one just because I like the pockets. There's just a snap in the center. I may put a flap over it. May not. Don't know. Um, but then that one is going to have a rope for a shoulder strap. So I don't know, but I'm going to stick to the same styles. I'll have like three or four styles and then that's it. So that's why I'm playing with all the different shapes and styles and whatever. Because when all is said and done, I'm going to pick the one that I like the best. And I'm going to, so, um, yeah. All right. I'm going to get off of here. I got to get ready for work. And just so you know, I have a four day weekend coming up. I had a float holiday and I tacked it onto Memorial Day on Friday. So after I get off work Thursday, I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, four days. And I will be enjoying it. Um, roommate is thinking that roommate might take some time and maybe overlap and maybe have a four day weekend too. Don't know if that can be pulled off though. So. I'm going to let y'all off here. You guys have a great weekend and great weekend. Yeah, I'm already thinking about the weekend. Great week. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.